With all of us leading such busy lives, we sometimes forget to stop and think about our retirement. So tell me, Brent, how can we find out how much money is needed to retire? Because you know, none of us want to be eating noodles. Yeah, there's no definitive amount that anyone needs in retirement. It's really around working out what your expenditure is and looking at what sort of retirement you want. Because everybody's different. Um, we've got uh, clients on varied incomes and lifestyles in retirement. So when you're planning for retirement, it's about sort of thinking, what you want to do during your retirement, um, what sort of costs are attached to that, and then setting goals on how you can achieve those. So if you want to travel like every month of the year around the globe, that's probably, you know, you need quite a bit of money. And that's right. All those sorts of interests and hobbies, they all cost money. So you need to sort of know, well, what does retirement look like, like for you? There are some generic figures out there. I think as a couple, they give around $60,000 for a, a comfortable retirement. And that's net of taxes as a base level to work Fair on. Year. Yeah, but if you want to look at your retirement seriously, it's about looking at your own personal situation, budgets, goals to work out, well, what does retirement look like for me? Because you don't want to be having to worry about whether you can go and play bingo on a Tuesday. Uh, that's right, you want to know that you've got I want to play money. bingo whenever I want, all right? So, okay, so what, how can people see if they're on track, I guess? Um, there's a number of tools out there. You can get some generic ones off your superannuation sites or off the website. The problem with those is they do have a lot of generic assumptions in there and it is looking solely at your superannuation. It doesn't look at any of your other assets such as you know investment assets or investment properties. Um, it also doesn't include uh, you know debt repayment or shares or any of those other things. So they can or whether you've still got your kids living at home at 45 years of age. And that's always an unknown now and quite often we see that still in the expenses even at later life. Uh, so yeah, they're the big considerations um, with those generic ones is they only tell you a very small piece of the puzzle. Um, it's really about getting some advice. Um, we as advisors have tools and retirement programs which can put the big picture together and we look first of all around what the goals, expenditures are both now and then leading up to retirement. Um, as well as that we then project all of your assets, expenditure forward. Because if you need $60,000 uh, in 2018, um, what you're going to need in 20 years time is going to be very different because of the effect of inflation. So when we're doing retirement planning, inflation. So it might be 120,000 instead of 60,000 at it that does. age. And then you sort of look at a goal and that's the hardest thing to project. You say, well, okay, I'm on track to achieve that million dollar figure by retirement, but you need to consider that a million dollars in 20 years time is it's not what it's worth today. <laughs> and that's the exact point. It's easy to put maybe a generic figure on it, but then how much is that worth? The other thing which doing proper retirement planning is for a lot of clients who may be eligible for things such as age pension. You know, mm -hmm. having an estimate of, well, will I be eligible for, and if I am eligible, how and much will am I- will I still even have an age pension? Is that's always the unknown. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a lot of shakeups in the uh, pension space in the last couple of years, so we don't expect a huge amount of change in the next few years. Um, having said that, that's always a risk. We can only base those uh, expectations or projections on what the rules are at the moment, and there is always the potential for changes when we're talking about uh, Centrelink or superannuation. Because they are calling us the sandwich generation. We're going to be stuck with elderly parents and our children for a lot longer. So we do actually need to really, and then we don't want to be uh, putting ourselves on our own children, I guess. Yeah, and some of those can be factored in as well, you know, looking at, and it's sometimes it's cross-generational when we're doing yeah. planning work, looking at your parents, how they may, uh, what their needs are for aged care and that type of thing, mm. um, as well as then, you know, the next generation who's looking to retire and still being able to assist kids. And back to how much you need in retirement, that also, we talked about it before, it depends on whether you intend to leave some money for the children, whether you want to leave a legacy. Um, so you need a lot more if you want to leave a legacy for the children as opposed to having what they call the ski retirement, which is spend the kids' inheritance. <laughs> you need a little bit less. So you know, whether you want to maintain some of that for clients it is a different outcome again. So what is your advice then to people for their retirement? Because obviously, you know, it is, we don't really think about it at this age, oh, I'm going to retire soon, so what do I need to get organised? But we really need to be putting those solid foundations down now. Is that what you're saying? Definitely. And I mean, if there's one thing I'd sort of say, you need to start early. The earlier, the better. There's no point, um, you're not going to make a change at age 65 when you want to stop work next week. So. Uh, most, it's too late, mostly yeah, by then to start yeah, look, <laughs> And we tend to find around 50 is the age where clients really start considering their retirement planning. 
Prior to that, they're tied up with the kids and sporting things, but school, you, all that type of stuff. But if you actually started in your late 30s, early 40s, what would, could that look like in difference of that 10 extra years of compounding? Oh, look, it can be a, a huge difference. If you just have that extra little bit of contribution year in, year out, and that money put in earlier, and then you get the effect of that compounding interest or returns over a longer period, it can have a huge difference. That, yeah. So that can simply be putting an extra 5% into your like uh, employer contribution towards your super could make a hell of a difference if you did that now. 100%. So things like superannuation is a very useful tool for retirement planning for two reasons. One, you can't access it, so you're locking that money away for a period of time. That's also a disadvantage. The second reason is that um, with your superannuation, it's a low tax environment. So you're generally paying more tax in your individual name. So if the money is for eventual retirement, by having that money in a low tax, it means the money can grow at a more rapid rate. So there's some benefits to salary sacrificing. So super's a useful tool, tool for retirement planning. Um, it's not the only tool. I mean, no. you can do an investment property or you can do an investment outside of superannuation, especially if you want to keep access to that money. Yep. You just might have to pay a little bit more tax on it. So obviously there's so much in it and there's, it's never too early to start planning for your retirement. So, but the task can seem overwhelming, but by having you know, a really good chat with the team from Kelly Wealth uh, Services, they can put your mind at ease and get you on track in no time. So give them a call and start retirement planning today. Uh, you're gonna have a better future for it and you won't be eating noodles.